Hello and welcome to the slipcase condition, uh, excuse me, the Blu-ray condition, where we will be talking about the Black Friday sales and the money that was spent and the tears that followed. Uh, I'm your host Graham and with me as always is the man, the myth, the legend, Luke Ryan. Hello Luke. Hello. <laughs> See, so uh, humble. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good to be doing another one of these after our humongous break from was it between episode four and five yes so yeah hopefully it's good to get back on a monthly schedule with us or vaguely monthly mm-hmm. um i suppose we should just jump into the topic which is going to be black friday sales and, and the build up to this phenomenon that is, seems to happen every year now it seems to get bigger every year but just a little caveat before we get there i, I want to just uh, mention something that you mentioned in the last episode and that was uh, Weird Science and 16 mm-hmm. Candles and, and for the listeners out there my enabler, Luke encouraged me to buy it and it just so happened that there was a, a sale at HMV where there were 2 for 15 and yes I got those slipcases and they were truly wonderful <laughs> <laughs> I told you yes, yes and it turns out that they've released um three or four movies with those textured slip cases. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And and I have them. I just hadn't uh, broken the seal. On some uh, of them. So, okay. You know, just whenever I'm feeling kind of sad or down or had a bad day at work, I, I, I come in the front door, I push by my family, I go straight to the weird science desk and just stroke it. <laughs> so comforting. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was going to have quite that effect on you, but okay. <laughs> it, it was marvellous. Um <laughs> So, uh, should we mention, well, we normally talk about things we've picked up, but I, I guess since we're talking about Black Friday sales, did you, was there anything that you purchased or anything that... Yeah, so I, I didn't really, there was a, a few online deals, nothing mm. I particularly felt like, oh, that's, I got to cash in on that. Another thing with Black Friday is it's so close to Christmas. It's yeah. always difficult, um, especially for me and, and the way I get paid work two jobs and so that the second job payday comes in at the end of the year Mm. so usually by the end of december i'm really struggling to kind of have extra money um so it just doesn't really work out but hmv did have a black friday sale which was 20 percent off all blu-rays yeah i was like holy shit (laughs) it's an incredible deal i couldn't quite believe it i mean it's it's not the best deal ever in the history of deals but it's a pretty damn good one Mm -hmm. especially considering it was a blanket deal across all of their blu-rays and i think they did vinyl as well right so i went into hmv and it was on the sunday they ran it from friday to sunday so i i was assuming in my head going in on sunday it'd be like the shells would be ravaged like it'd be like (laughs) it was fine fully stocked no one had even really taken advantage of the deals but uh I wanted to get one, no, two things. Mm. Uh, Robocop, the Arrow video release, which I wasn't sure if they'd have it because it's a fairly limited kind of sought after title. I'd seen some people on the Blu ray forum saying they couldn't find it in their local HMV. And I was umming and ahhing about getting that release to begin with. So I thought, okay, if I see it in the, in the store, I'll get it. Store, listen to me, shop. If I see it in the shop, I'll get it. And there it was. They had a few copies. So I grabbed that and two Criterions. And mm. so. I got all three of those for £20 each, which was a pretty good deal. I mean, the Robocop was 25 so kind of five off that. And then the two Criterions were the pricier Digipack editions. So yeah. very happy with my three pickups. And, and just for people out there, where did you get Criterion? Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. So the, the other one I really wanted was Moonrise Kingdom, which now completes my Wes Anderson collection. Very happy about that. Yeah. And the other one was Do, Do the Right Thing from Spike mm. Lee, which I haven't seen, so terrific movie kind um, of. so two films that I love and one that I'm really looking forward to checking out for the first time yeah I, I am nervous about Robocop um, I, I ordered it direct from Arrow along with uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and I, I just assumed that Robocop was going to come with Fear and Loathing because I ordered them together yeah today I got Fear and Loathing in itself and mm. I'm, I'm kind of wondering where my Robocop is now um, that, that would be tragic if you missed out on that one uh, dead or alive it'll be coming with me one way or another <laughs> I, I will be getting that thing um, but I'm just a little bit worried about it um, yeah, gonna... well, I was going to I was going to make some kind of joke like I was wondering whether or not to get it and I just thought I'd stay out of trouble 
<laughs> pick it up but it, it's the thing with robocop is i know I'm, I'm not going to watch that for like years probably mm. i love the film but it's just one of those things where again you think ah, it's the limited edition you know i think i think they are releasing it in a regular yeah release right yeah so mm. i i the, love it. it it's it's amazing i hope it's the full uncut gory one that i saw back in the 80s <laughs> right i think there's a few versions on there there's a just grab it now and have a quick look. It's like they're all, they haven't got the backing card on it, but uh, I'm sure there's a director's cut or something. Mm. It's just loaded with stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, just quickly, what's your favorite quote from the movie? Um, it's when he's it's when, it's when he's getting like quasi murdered, and he's like, Oh, does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? <laughs> I, I think, I remember, like, my dad just laughing at that a lot watching it growing up, so it always stuck in my head. When I use way more than I should is can you fly Bobby <laughs> <laughs> which n- no one gets but yeah I, it's I just, a good one yeah I, I love it so and then you got the classic I'd buy that for a dollar I mean that's just like yeah. textbook Robocop quoting right there yeah I have like the, the trilogy release somewhere yeah I have and, that one as well and that was you know perfectly fine to me I certainly wasn't mm. like you know, really hoping we'd get a better transfer or anything but I'm sure that it looks incredible I think they've done their own kind of scan and everything, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, did you get any more from the sales? Or no, that was it. Just the three again. Close to Christmas, bit of a tight one. Uh, I mean, I did spend you know sixty quid, but still. Um, yeah, that was it really. Uh, yeah. I I got one thing from the Barnes and Noble Criterion sale, so that kind of again sale close to Christmas. But mm-hmm. that was it for me. For Black Friday really didn't go crazy or anything. I I had um, saved a little bit of cash. For Black Friday because I had started... a little bit hmm. okay interesting <laughs> um, <laughs> because I, I knew it was coming and there would be some deals with certain uh, production companies and things like that so I had bought stuff like Fear and Loathing and Robocop I bought them back in August when they came out and paid for them then yeah um, so I knew that they were kind of locked in I could start to save money um, there was a Masters of Cinema sale that was like the week before Black Friday oh yeah I remember and there was about I'd say four or five titles on there that I was going to get um, and, and when I went back on the sale had stopped I'd missed it by a day or something um, which was disappointing uh, 101 Films had a sale on their Black Friday stuff so uh, the Black Label stuff sorry uh, so I picked up four titles of, of them that I, I wanted to get Arrow sale which is normally normally my weak spot um, I, I mm. went in I, I said I've got £40 pounds that is what I have and I spent £40 which I was particularly proud of <laughs> with that one okay. <laughs> controlling myself um, now you I, I've all obviously alluded to a big purchase to, to you earlier on and I haven't told you anything about it yeah so about a week or two back um, Graham sent me a private message with just a, it's just a receipt basically with a, a, a pound number on there it's, yeah I'm still I'm not sure if you just river me on that one it's a no. joke no. no, no. Holy um, shit! Okay, right. Um, Spill. So, <laughs> I, I I'm really getting into all these kind of cheesy B movies and horror movies and cult type of things. The kind of things that um, I used to see all the time in the video shop in the eighties, and I, and I love them. And I've been looking at a company called Vinegar Syndrome for a long while. Have you heard of them? Right. I've heard the name, it rings a bell, but I don't know anything specific about them. So, like, 88 Films has ported a lot of their movies across to the UK, and I've got a few of them, uh, and I was looking at the website, and I was like, there's lots here that I want, um, but I, I have a set amount of money. Uh, which So you just you just bought the company then, is that the... No, no, not quite so. Um, <laughs> I, 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 the sale went live, I jumped on, it was a 50% off everything sale. So I started going like, okay, this one, this one, this one, yep, 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 yep. And they started adding up and I'm like, phew. Um, so at, at me, I naturally get worried about sub costs. So I'm on the forum and I'm like, what's the, the import charges like? Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, they, they, they never seem to have import charges on them. I don't know how they get round about it, but... You, you better hope there's no import charges. <laughs> yes. So I, I'm looking <laughs> I, I'm looking at this and I'm adding stuff up and I'm like, Wow. Wow, I'm at I'm at two hundred dollars here. This is this is getting out of control. Um, I'll just I'm going to close the computer off. I'm going mm-hmm. to go away. It's lasting for three days. I'll think about things and I'll go back to it. 
So jump onto some forums and I'm just talking to people going like what's the quality like of this release? What's this one like? What should you do? What's the best kind of option for like value for money? And somebody mentions their subscription package. Mm-hmm. So basically um, I end up buying that instead of any releases. So the subscription package that I purchased is basically every single title they're going to release this year. Um, okay. And like I, I paid for like quarterly shipping, so every three months I'll just get every movie that they've released, the multiple slip cases, the UHDs, whatever it is. And I just I went for that. It's like a huge gamble. Uh, but this year they're doing lots of giallo and Italian Euro cult movies that I'm really big into. And it was probably the biggest outlay that I've ever done that I'm still dealing with the ramifications of because I didn't have the money to pay for that. <laughs> you know, I had, I had a smaller budget. So um, I don't know if anybody out there has done this, the, the impulse buy, where you're just like, holy crap, what the, what the hell have I just done? Mm. Um, you know, I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat because I'd placed the order at like one o'clock in the morning. And um, <laughs> I woke up and I was just like, holy crap, what, what am I going to do? Um, I looked at PayPal. So I yeah. had, it automatically went into PayPal credit, mm-hmm. which gives you four months to pay off. Um, and then I started loading stuff up onto eBay. <laughs> right, okay. So I don't even get any of the movies. I don't get the first package until March. Interesting. And this is just all of the 2020 releases, is that right? Yes, everything they're going to release, which should be somewhere from 40 to 50 movies. Um, okay. Did Did you then go in and before you placed this order, did you look at like how many titles roughly per, like, you know, did you work out the price of everything to see if it would yes. be like a good deal kind and of thing? I also went to the secondary market. I went to eBay and started looking at the price of things over here. And um, even used discs seem to go for anywhere from like twenty five to fifty quid here. Wow! Um, and and if they release box sets, you get box sets. If they release more titles than they originally planned, you just get them. If they release less, then they'll refund you some money. Um, hmm. They do limited slip cases, so if they do two slip cases, you will get both of them. Um, if they do a 4K UHD, you get automatically get that with a Blu-ray as well. It just, and I was looking at some of the titles they'd coming out. I quite fancied all the Euro stuff, and I was just like, you know what? Uh, I'll go for it. It's one in the morning. I, I've had a beer or two. Um, that, this is future Graham's problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I think the, the closing tally of it was. Seven hundred and twenty dollars, and that was half price. The subscription right. was half price, so of the year. So I think it's valued at like thirteen hundred, and then I got shipping on top of it. Was this was this a, a Black Friday thing? Yes, it was only available for three days. Okay, and uh, have you like looked into people who've had that service before? Yes. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So you've kind of done your research on that and how it works, and if they think it's worth it and stuff. Yeah, um, mm. uh, and uh, it seems it seems to be viable. And, and like I said, if there's anything there that I don't like, eBay it and make more because I kind of worked out the value of what each disc is going to cost me. And it'll be somewhere between twelve and fourteen quid. See, I was about to say that makes a lot of sense actually, but I feel like you're just roping, roping me into your own justification. <laughs> <laughs> no. like, well, it's not that bad. What do you think about? It? But to be fair, I was racking my brains to think what it could have been when you showed me that dollar. Uh, price amount mm. and i was thinking there isn't any single release that could possibly be that much and then otherwise we're talking like so many titles but i never would have thought of that and i'd never heard of that ever being a thing from a label which is just interesting so, so what do you think of the idea of that a subscription package for a, yeah, a label? I, I mean as you were talking i was thinking about how would that work for arrow or eureka maybe you know or even mm. criterion you know yeah. that's quite an interesting idea um yeah, certainly not something I, I, I'd go in for. But I, it, if you're really passionate about something, it really it depends, I guess. It also, and this company as well, it's like um, they're, uh, they're a preservation company as well. They do their own in-house uh, transfers of things. You know, they initially started out as a company that would do transfers for other companies. Um, but now they do, and, and apparently their transfers are 
exceedingly awesome for movies that shouldn't have those kind of transfers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, we've got a bit of time to wait um, and then yeah. we'll figure out whether I've made a huge mistake or an awesome one. And then again, when you think about having to pay it off over a few months, kind of lessens the blow somewhat, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, I'm looking at a very extravagant purchase for the beginning of next year. Um, so, Are you going to tell yeah. us more? Yeah, I guess I can just go into it now. It's not a deal or anything, but it's the new Twin Peaks box set, which is coming out in yeah. uh, January. I think it comes out in America this week, and it got pushed back for the UK for some reason. And it's it's really frivolous because I have everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't want to sell my pre-existing editions either because they're so nice. But it's purely a special features buy because it has like nine hours of new stuff. And this is stuff that I absolutely mm. love. So it's like, it's a lot of money. How is much it really is it? worth it? I don't know. It's about 120 quid, I think. Wow. All yeah. in. And then you have, there's a 4K disc with the pilot episode, kind of rescanned in 4K and episode eight of The Return. Mm. So not that I'm 4K ready in any way, shape or form, but that's kind of a nice bonus. But there's behind the scenes stuff on the Blu-ray of the last season of Twin Peaks. And mm. it is some of my favorite behind the scenes stuff ever and so there's so like is, that on, is that on the last season did you see yeah yeah it's it's, it's on the season? blu-ray that came out yes yes the season sure just just checking yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we get bogged down in that whole that whole debate and we'll just we'll leave your mind <laughs> as closed as it is and you know we'll, we'll move swiftly on but yeah so <laughs> seven and a half hours of new behind the scenes wow. stuff so I, I can't wait for that yeah. Um, there's lots of stuff. Maybe I'll talk about it more when I get the box set, but it, so, that'll be like a Christmas money going towards that kind of thing. Well, that that turns to my Christmas list. I've just asked for money now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and and again, I suppose with the, the Twin Peaks thing, it is a lot of money, but it's something that I'm so passionate yes. about. It's something I really love. So it's like a nice collector's piece as well. Hmm. Um so yeah, and, and I don't know too much about that company you mentioned that you got the subscription uh, service for, so I can't really, you know, I don't know anything about their releases, but I'm assuming they're good. And if there's some, there's something that you're really into, then I'll uh, I'll join you in trying to justify it somehow and say <laughs> it might have been a good idea. I appreciate that, and then it's it, <laughs> of course it's it's going to be slim pickings for the next few months. I, I won't be picking up. I much. would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've stopped looking at the forums, you know, for the deals. I, I've, I've stopped going to the pages and looking at anything. I, I just quietly cuddle myself at night and tell, you know, say everything's going to be okay, Graham. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was it. I, I felt that um, some of the deals in Black Friday were pretty good. There was like, the Arrow. Did you have a look at the Arrow sale? I did, yeah. You sent me a message talking yeah. about some of the things. And there was a few that took my fancy. But again, it was just like, do I really need it? Am I going to watch it anytime soon? And, you know, maybe I did, because it was like a warehouse clearance sale, right? Mm, yeah. So they had a few things that, there was one thing that caught my eye. It was the Argento release. Um, Cat something, mm, Nine oh, Tails, Cat something like tails, that. Yeah. 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 So that was like a special edition that was out of print. Mm. And I guess they had a few copies. Considered that, but it was twenty five pounds. I thought it's just too much for something that I haven't seen before. With like Robocop, I know I love that film, so I can kind of Cat and Nine Tails is wonderful. Yeah, truly wonderful. yeah, so yeah, so I really like Argento, and I have a few of his like um, like nice releases of his like Phenomena. I have that one, and I think there's something else. But yeah, so I, I kind of wanted it to go with the collection, but um, yeah, I didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, it was one of those things where they, they seemed to discover a lot of titles that they previously released, like Phenomena was on there, and I'm sure it was 30 or £35, mm. um, which is way more than what it originally was, but I suppose it's a seller's market at this point. But they had um, they had um, Donnie Darko limited edition sets. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, and that's that's from like uh, 2015, maybe? 16? 16, I think, yeah. Um, which, which was pretty weird that they, they seem to find these things in the back of a cupboard um, but I didn't really go for anything extravagant either I, I kind of had my eye on another company and uh, <laughs> yeah clearly <laughs> yes it, it definitely did the business for me um, so 
Wait, so one last thing. So you say a quarterly uh, package, right? Yes. So so you have to wait every three months to get like a big bundle, basically. Well, it was... Um, the, the deal was... Six hundred and forty bucks dollars for the the subscription, and then you had to put packaging on top of it. Mm. So the packaging um, for the, the, the every month was like one hundred and eighty dollars, and then the packaging for the quarterly was eighty dollars. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. So I I just went well, I need to save some kind of money. I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but but we'll see how we go on with. It. I'm 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 really curious. Um, I'm quite excited and just this is really going to be a test of patience now yeah and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it as the yeah. episodes roll on and, uh, you, you do get the releases um, I think it's several weeks before they actually are released as well mm-hmm. if you're a subscriber so I, I don't know we'll see how it pans out um, maybe our new intro will just be me crying for five minutes before we <laughs> start to talk about any kind of movies <laughs> which I'm sure people would love to hear that Sorry about the background noise. Graham is currently recording from a Starbucks. He doesn't have a home anymore, but uh, <laughs> yes. you know we we make the best. <laughs> yes, um, of course I wouldn't be drinking Starbucks because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be getting it. Using Coffee the number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Christmas is coming up. Um, have you anything particular on your list other than cash? Yeah, actually, um, I, I've asked for two Masters of Cinema releases. Snap. Kind of, yeah. It makes me. It reminds me of a few years ago when that's all I was asking my family for, mm. and it was a very nice, you know, uh, bundle of Christmas presents every year. I think there's only two. High Noon was one of them, which was like steadily getting yeah. more expensive on Amazon. So fingers crossed, the person I asked for it bought it in time. <laughs> yeah, because um, I I didn't realize that one was going it, so quickly. It's gone. Mm. Mm. And I forget what the other one. I think the African Queen was the other one. Oh, so um, that's yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that that's safely locked away somewhere, wrapped, waiting for me. The African Queen. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And the other one that I've got, uh, or asked for, is Duck You Sucker, uh, a fistful of dynamite. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll probably try and get that one um, too we'll, before it goes. Yeah, I, I do like uh, Leone stuff. So and this was his last western. So I'm really quite excited about that one. And James Coburn. Um, who's not to like? Yeah, so. I haven't I haven't seen it, but uh, being a Leone film, I'm quite intrigued. Yeah, and and I think that'll be it for for my Christmas gifts. Um, those, well, those were ordered um, and and put by. Anything else? Now, if anybody asks, oh, please, please give me money, <laughs> right? Please, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you can spare. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. So we we'll jump on to releases in December. We'll see what's coming yeah. out. Okay, but we'll go back to the start of this week, uh, December the 2nd. There's been a, a few releases there. Anna and the Apocalypse. Have you heard of this one? I have. Uh, Connie, my fiance, is asking me to watch it. Um, so she's heard something about it, but I don't know much about it. So Yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. It's um, a zombie high school musical. Yeah, I got the impression it's a bit of a genre mashup film. So Yes, but it's what it doesn't tell you is is it's rather more bleaker and darker than you would expect Mm -hmm. Um, and the songs are rather uh, hilarious and ridiculously fun and the song and dance numbers are pretty good i think you'll like it um so it's good Uh, i'm quite curious about the bfi release of spetters the paul verhoeven movie from the 80s i've not seen any of his movies that he did before he came over to hollywood completely over my head i'm not even aware of it yeah, I'm just curious about that. Just before we jump on to 4K releases, there's a couple here. When do you think you're going to go that route? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, next year seems to be, it's going to be another year of change, I think, and so I'm not sure. But <laughs> Please in, tell me in, you're not moving again, man. No, not moving, no, but I mean just you know, reorganising priorities in life and things like that. So I don't think a, a nice shiny 4K TV is on the horizon, but hey, who knows? Maybe Black Friday next year, right? <laughs> yeah, good deal on a on a TV. In fact, my uncle was telling me uh, about he just got a 4K TV. I don't think he really even knows what 4K is, but you know, <laughs> to him it's just a new TV. So I don't know. Maybe in the next couple of years. I mean, I've got a few 4K titles, nothing 
extensive, maybe f- four or five discs, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so there is Watchmen, and then there's Watchmen the Ultimate Cut in 4K. Um, we've got the Criterion release of On the Waterfront. Oh, really? Is that coming to the UK? Yep, that's, that's out, came out Monday there. That's a great film. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. It's very good. I should definitely see it. Yeah. Uh, not a movie, but it's a TV show, um, and it's The Name of the Rose. Now, I don't... Are, you sure, are you sure it's not a movie? Yes. Yes, I'm sure. It's a 10 okay. part series. Um, okay. I, I recently just watched the, the old movie with Connery. Um, which I loved so I'm quite curious about checking out that series at some point but mm. I doubt that's something that I'll actually buy I don't really buy many TV shows what about yourself? No not at all really uh, Only if it's exceptional? Yeah I guess um, even then I mean it's it seems these days it's trickier for uh, some of the best shows are on streaming services now and so they don't mm. get the release uh, one notable one I can think of is Cobra Kai I don't know if yeah. you've seen that Yes I mean phew, incredible like it's it's funny it's 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 like dramatic it it looked like it was going to be a goofy kind of hey look we're, we're getting the old actors back in but it was genuinely brilliant mm. and i would love to have like a you know a disc release of that but it's kind of stuck and locked behind youtube premium yeah. or whatever you know i'm so. sure it will come at some point i hope so yeah um on december the 9th we have fear and loathing in las vegas which is a new fangled set. I love that movie. Um, that, that, Never seen it. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, it's, it's one of my favourites. Endlessly quotable. Just weird, weird film. Um, from Arrow, there is The Exorcist 3. Hmm. Um, yeah, I've never seen it. No, I, I think I have. I think it's mental, from what I can remember. Um, <laughs> Masters of Cinema, we mentioned it earlier. Uh, a Fistful of Dynamite, which is coming out. Um, one of the 88 films Jackie Chan recent releases Miracles The Cantonese Godfather yeah. yeah I don't know anything about it but I'm all in on picking it up at some point you know, have I've... you picked up the recent releases of those uh, Jackie no. Chan movies um, no Crime Story and no. The Protector nope but I've definitely seen them and want to get them but I, I some of those ones they do go down to about £10 after a few months so I'm kind of waiting for a nice price drop. Well, um, I got them pre-ordered on Hive, um, okay. which is a site I don't use much, but they were £10 each, and I pre-ordered oh, nice. uh, all four of them, and they've been like a month apart, so it's not been like, what yeah. a cash of time. The one that I'm like desperately waiting for is Dragons Forever. Like That's the big one for me. Right. Um, because uh, have you seen uh, was it Meals on Wheels? Wheels on Meals? Have yes. you seen that one? Yes. Yeah, so the, the fight scene in that between Jackie Chan and um, Benny the Jet. Yes. It's just one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. It's incredible. And in Dragons Forever, he fights him again, so it's kind of like the rematch. Um, but it's also like, you know, the three dragons, you know, so that's, mm. yeah, I'm really looking for. I haven't seen it before, so I'm kind of, yeah, that's the one I'm really excited for. I'll keep an eye out for that as well. I'll, I'll be getting that on release for sure. What about the Vengeance trilogy from Arrow? No, I mean, I, I have the plain archive edition of old boy which is very nice and i have the other two vengeance trilogy films just in standard releases so i don't i'm not really craving uh because mm. i haven't seen them yet you know so it's just one yeah. of those things where i'm sure it's a very nice release and everything but uh yeah. um from second sight films is the amazing mr blunden in one of their uh, limited edition packages now i got a screener through for this one um and i threw it on one night it's a it's a a children's film primarily um, and I put it on with my daughter and uh, after five minutes or just as it started she was like this looks rubbish um, uh, after ten minutes the both of us were extremely hooked uh, uh, and by the okay. end of it we loved it this was wonderful um, came out in 1972 uh, and it pretends to be a ghost story set in the Victorian era before it turns into a time travelling adventure it sounds bonkers, but this was just so wonderful. And it, it has these pantomime-like performers of the bad uh, mother and father in this one who are over the top and kind of cheesy, but it's so fitting in the movie and it's kind of whimsical. It's not set at Christmas, but it has that kind of Christmas feel about it. Yeah. What was it called again? The Amazing Mr. Blunden. 
Oh, is it a foreign film? Nope. It's, it's a British no. movie. British mm. film. Okay, mm. interesting. The, 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 yeah, it's not like frame where it would be being set and everything. Yeah. yeah it's the, the man that did um, the Railway Children movie. This was his second feature. Yeah. All right, interesting. Um, there'll be a standard edition at some point, but th- this was the, something that just completely caught me off guard. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and my daughter's been constantly going on about watching it again. So that's, that's only a good thing. <laughs> that's you know. nice. Yeah. Um, once upon a time in Hollywood. Mm. Will you be picking that up? Uh, not on release. No. Um, well, I don't. I don't. Is there a steelbook coming out of it? Yes, I think they're HMV only, but I think it's like yeah. thirty pounds or something. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they, they, they always they only do the four Ks now, <laughs> don't they? It's always yes. like the four K steelbook, and that's it. Nothing else for us. Kind of pitiful ten eighty P. You know, slumming it in. <laughs> Yeah, in in standard high definition, um, I have like all of his films in steelbook form, so I'd like to keep that going, and I do want to see it again because it was a film that conflicted me when I saw mm. it in the cinema. Let's have a quick sidebar about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, yeah, w- what conflicted you about it? Uh, well, I'm assuming everyone has seen it. Well, that's because good point. Th- yeah, so yeah, a, a little bit of a spoiler. But- yeah, so spoiler warning for the end of Once Upon a Time what, in Hollywood. I tell you what, I'll put a thing in the notes um, okay. of what we're spoiling and how to skip by it if you haven't seen it as yet. I mean, I, w- I won't be explicit, but just the way that he kind of played with the true events and kind of gave it his own twist at the end mm. just left me feeling a bit icky. Like, I just thought, yeah, I guess it's a nice thought, but that's not what happened. And yeah. what did happen really happened. Mm. And so it, so it just left me feel a bit you know i don't know it's just a weird one um but it for the ma- majority of it the acting is incredible i love the style of it yes people like to rag on the brad pitt driving through hollywood for five minutes scene but i love that stuff you know, so. when when brad pitt is engaged like he is in here i, I can watch him just feed a dog or just drive yeah. through town it, yeah he, he really brought it in this one and in um ad astra too this year yeah, it was awesome. Still that. awesome great movie. film um, it, it's it's definitely not what people were expecting. I think it, it was kind of sold as a big kind of like sci-fi action film, but it's not at all. It's no, like I, I loved different. it. Absolutely loved yeah, it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, but look, once upon a time in Hollywood, I found the whole Margot Robbie character. Her, mm-hmm. her, her, was it Sharon Tweet? No, Sharon Tate. Tate. Um, I found that a complete distraction from the rest of the movie. Um, mm-hmm. I, I wish that wasn't there. Um, because it, yeah, yeah. it feels unnecessary. And, and see on the second and third watch, because I watched that a couple of times, it's even more jarring and and disrupts the pace because it, DiCaprio and Pitt are amazing. Um, mm-hmm. Their little stories are great. I would, I would happily have jettisoned all her stuff and had a 30-minute segment of those two maniacs in Italy making those movies. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I loved her scenes because it, it gave such a life to that person. It was mm. a wonderful tribute, I thought. Uh, and I did love that when she went to see her own movie, they used the real footage from that. And so Sharon Tate's actual yeah. acting was in the... That was a nice touch. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. But it's the way how they used her character as a kind of tool just to pull the rug out from you at the end and go, ah, see, you thought that was happening. But it was just a tool, really, for him to kind of subvert our expectations i suppose but i did i did like her performance and it's it's very kind of abstract really it's just more of this kind of portrait of a, of a you know vibrant kind of personality and mm. yeah i know it, it's i need to see it again and kind yeah. of reevaluate it i guess yeah. isn't there like a bunch of uh, deleted scenes on the blu-ray as well as like 20 minutes of yeah it was re-released into cinemas with an extended edition right yeah, yeah. so i was wondering if it was the same or that they're just presenting it as deleted scenes oh. separately throw it in see, see whatever uh, it's like um, here I've, I've got a recommendation for you there's some re-releases of, of powerhouse movies but I'll just I'll just skip over them because they've already came out um, but Dora and the Lost City of Gold the Dora the Explorer movie are you in or are you out Luke? well I, I have a Cineworld Unlimited card and if I'd had unlimited time on top of that I definitely would have gone to see that I've I quite enjoyed certain you know kids movies over the over the years that have defied my expectations. They look like a pretty fun little you know faux Indiana Jones adventure kind of movie. So well, I'll tell you this: it is hilarious and brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> it should. There's there's one point where they get infected with um, 
uh, a psychotropic drug from a plant and they turn mm-hmm. it into the animated characters. Oh, that's and, cool. And so. it's it's quite funny. Uh, and it's got like the adult humour and the childish humour and some silly bits. Yeah, and yeah. Some, but it came together really well. I thought it was tremendous. Um, the one you can definitely talk a little bit about here is the Criterion release on the 16th of December of La Jetée and Sans Salil. Uh, yeah, I've only seen um, the Pierre uh, Le Jeté, which is. Have you seen it? I forgot. I haven't. I know you. You, right, okay. you went on about it. So it's Chris Marker, I believe, is the, the director, and it is a like twenty minute short film, time travel, and it's completely comprised of photographs. There's no moving image. It's just still images with a voiceover. And it's about this guy who is in like the future. I think it's Paris, like World War Three has happened. It's like proper apocalyptic and he's being tested on and they're sending him back through time in his own head. And he meets this woman and there's just recurring things going on. And honestly, it's just, I think it's brilliant. And I watched it with Connie and she wasn't quite as sold on it, but <laughs> I just loved the concept of it and how it held. I don't know if it would work for a feature length film, but it's just uh I'm excited. That's, I didn't know that was getting released in the UK. I'm definitely going to grab that because I haven't seen the other film and uh, mm. that's definitely one I want to own. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there, but it's it's definitely one you should check. And again, it's like 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're really not kind of losing time if you give it a chance. And I think it's a really interesting kind of experimental film. Yeah, you, you sold it to me. I, I'll be getting that at some point um, when I'm solvent again. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Blu-ray release of Crawl. Did you see Crawl? Oh yeah, yeah. I love that film. It was really, really good. I like the, uh, I like kind of one setting ish yes. movies. You know where the majority of the action takes place in one setting, and uh, yeah, it was a really good time in the cinema. Enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it was a huge surprise for me. I, I loved it. Um, there is the uh, QT Eight, which is uh, Tarantino the first eight movies, which is basically okay. just a talking head documentary on these movies. So I'll, I'll probably check that out at some point, but. You know, everybody knows Tarantino said he was just going to do 10 movies yeah. and leave it. So, you know, is there a follow-up? Is it going to be the last two? It's going to be a short documentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really hope that Tarantino just doesn't stop because um, his movies are event movies for me. Yeah, well, I, that's that's the thing. It's still an event, you know. Once mm. upon a time, it was a big thing. Yes. I think he wants to keep it that way. I think he wants to end on a film like that and... You know, I I can understand the appeal of him wanting to kind of not be the director who just keeps making movies, keeps making movies. I mean, I haven't seen many recently, but I know Clint Eastwood is just you know pumping them out, and yeah. it when seems like the responses. It seems the responses are kind of declining as yeah. as you know as he gets older. But I haven't seen them. I can't attest to that. But uh, I, I can see Tarantino's point of view on that but I, I too would love to see him just keep yeah. making films but, of course but like you said you've, you've got Eastwood but then you've on the other hand you've got Scorsese who is right exactly throwing out classics constantly even uh, Spielberg you know who mm-hmm. just keeps kind of doing different things and yeah yeah and, and I think I don't think Tarantino is one that would just throw out anything either like, no I think he's got a bit of care in him um, I've never heard of this one before but it's Kiki's delivery service um it's the thirtieth anniversary special edition. It was an animated film. I think so. Yeah, not heard of it. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, and then we kind of skip by to the rest of December, and there's nothing really there because, well, it's Christmas time, and who releases anything at that time of year? And that is it. That is us all cut yeah. up. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so all all joking aside, I did see that thirtieth anniversary release, and I was like, hmm. Oh, 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 I want that, you know, but, but it, it's just, it, it's just shiny tat, you know, there's, there's nothing real. I mean, it comes with the art book, which is an incredible piece on its own, but you can get that for like 20 quid. Hmm. So really you're just paying for a, was it like a commemorative coin or whatever? Yeah. Would love to have it, but it's way too expensive. So I, I believe they did chance. that, was it this year or, or last year with uh, my neighbor Totoro? Yep. So yeah. that was, it would have been 2018 for the 30th of that. And I think that that, went on sale at one point because it clearly wasn't selling very well yeah. but uh, even then it was still like 50 quid on sale mm. oh well there's plenty to keep us going there um, yeah yeah I, 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 I want to go and check out Once Upon a Time in Hollywood again you know it's, it's one of those ones see when you, you trust a director like you do like I do with Tarantino when you, you watch a movie and you don't enjoy it 
you want to go back and see it more. I think you, you're more eager to go back to it than you would be if you saw a movie and yeah. loved it. Yeah, I get that. I, I was also a bit unimpressed with the Bruce Lee scene, mainly because like like <laughs> you got someone who who really looks like him. <laughs> although although when he took his glasses off, the effect was ruined somewhat. But when he had the shades on, it was like holy shit, this is like a really great kind of you know performance. And then they kind of, again, he just becomes the butt of the joke to, <laughs> to kind of Brad Pitt's character, yeah. which you know I don't mind that, but it just it seemed like they were painting him in a well of course he was painting him in a different light it's tarantino he can do whatever he wants he yes. kind of alter history as he sees fit that's kind of we we should grow to expect this it's been 10 years since he did inglorious bastards and hmm. i guess he set that precedent now where he can kind of go back and fuck around with the timeline so to speak yeah but uh yeah uh yeah i know that I, I there's still a lot i want to go back and see though there's hmm. some great scenes in that film yeah yeah but absolutely. um um, and, I, and I like that I feel conflicted about it. It's it's a bit more interesting than yeah, it was great. Next, you yeah, know, it, there's something, there's an itch that needs to be scratched to go back yeah. and check it out again. You want to go back and assess it? Did I miss something? You know, is there something underlying that I, that I didn't catch the first time round? It's just or or will that ending play out differently now that I know that it's coming? You know, because that usually when there's a twist ending in a film or something happens that's unexpected, when you see it again, you know what's going to happen. It changes, you know. The whole tone of the film changes sometimes, and it can be for better or worse. Hmm. It, I just find it was a great movie about you know male romance. <laughs> sure, yeah, that was great. Um, so, next episode we are going to list our top five releases of the year. These yep. won't be um, the best releases; they will just be our favourites, things that make yep. us feel all warm and fuzzy, um, like weird science slipcase. <laughs> Not the slipcase of, slip of the year award slipcase of the decade award yes um, you really did you, you nailed it with that thanks for enabling me yet again <laughs> um, as always uh, we appreciate your listenership if you pop over to iTunes and give us a little rating and review we would really appreciate that also as well uh, we do have the Facebook page if you want to drop over there and list your top five maybe we'll read them out on the next episode or if you don't have that Twitter we've got all our social media links uh, in the box below. <laughs> yep. Try Maybe, probably. Yeah, in the comment box. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have it all there. Uh, that's, It'll again, be somewhere. Again, like this, you know, future game's problem. I mean, he we, listens we, back. You might need a map to find it, but you'll get there eventually. Yeah. There'll it'll, be some it'll sort of... Be something there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next episode. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.